Hey everyone, and welcome back to the PTG Rail Route Learning Series. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the Armstrong Powerhouse Wagons Class 315 Electric Multiple Unit Pack. And I'm going to be driving a journey which comes with the pack following the real-life timetable of train 2 Whiskey 72, which is the 1940 service from London Liverpool Street through to Shenfield on the Great Eastern Main Line for a total journey distance of around 20 and a quarter miles. I will be calling at every station along the way, and the stops will include Stratford, Maryland, Forest Gate, Manor Park, Ilford, Seven Kings, Good Maze, Chadwell Heath, Romford, Gidea Park, Harold Wood, Brentwood, and finally Shenfield. The Class 315 units have been in service since 1980 and were manufactured at Brell York between 1980 and 1981. A total of 61 of these four coach units were produced, with a maximum capacity of 318 seats. Each unit has a maximum speed of 75 miles per hour, with a power output of 880 horsepower or 656 kilowatts, running on the 25 kilovolt 50 hertz AC overhead electrification system. Each unit weighs 127.5 metric tons, and each coach length is just under 65 feet. They are currently operated by TFL Rail, but are slowly being phased out in favour of the new Bombardier Class 345 units, which are in use on the Crossrail route. Once in the cab of the Class 315, then the first thing that we need to do here is to move the reversing handle to the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. Uh, so what you need to do to do that, unlike with most other units, but like with the Armstrong Powerhouse Class 313, the first thing you have to do is press F to hold down the dead man's handle, and this then unlocks the reversing handle. So now I can press S twice to move it into the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. At this point, the speedometer jumps all of the way up and back down, which I presume is part of the testing sequence uh, on this unit. I'm not quite sure um, exactly the reason why the speedometer does that. So now that I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is set the headlights to the correct setting. So you can see this switch there, uh, black switch on the left-hand side of the cab. And if I press and hold Shift and H, I can then move it all of the way around until the headlight setting there says daytime running, which is the correct setting for the time of day at which we are traveling. The next thing I'm going to do now is to open the window, just because the unit will sound much better once I've done so. And now I need to go around this side to turn on the uh, saloon lighting. So if I turn lighting set there, the passengers will now have lights um, while we're traveling on this journey. The next thing I need to do here is to set up the GSM radio. So to do that, I need to press the data entry key. And now I need to enter the train's head code, followed by the number of the signal up ahead. So the head code is 2Whiskey72, so if I just click on the 2, and then 9 for W, and then 7, 2. And now I need to enter the signal number, which is uh, 53, so you'd enter 053. And now if I tick that off, the train will now register on the GSM radio system. So now just to have a quick look at uh, some of the cab controls here, in front of us there we've got the driver reminder appliance which is currently illuminated to remind me that the signal ahead is currently at danger. And so I'll turn this off once it's time to depart and the signal is clear. Now if we look around here you've got the brake handle there which is a standard West Code three step brake. So you've got the release position and then position one, two, position three which is full service and then a final fourth position which is emergency uh, which you really shouldn't be using normally uh, when driving um, in any train really. So now if we continue around the cab, in front of us we've got the horn there which is a two tone horn controllable with the space bar and the B key. <laughs> Just above that we've got the speedometer measured in miles per hour. As already mentioned, the maximum speed of this train is 75 miles per hour, though we won't be able to reach that on this journey today. 
If we now continue around here, we've got a standard brake gauge there, which is found in most British multiple units. And as you can see, there's two needles. So of course the needle on the right hand side is the brake cylinder pressure gauge. And so the higher that needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. If I now release the brakes slightly, you see that the needle has fallen there and it continues to fall to zero, then the brakes are released. Continuing around here, we've got a throttle control which has four steps or notches of power. And um, that's pretty much it as far as the cab guide goes. So what I now need to do is jump outside the train. I need to go to the back because unfortunately at Liverpool Street Station, you can't look at the front of the train here as the game considers you underground and it won't actually let you put the camera in the correct position to look at the uh, front of the train. So I'm just gonna go to the back of the train here quickly to change the destination blind to read Shenfield. And then we're able to depart and head out towards Shenfield. So you can see just there that the destination blind currently reads Liverpool Street, and if I use the F8 key then I can change that. So just cycling through the destinations, and now we're on Shenfield. That's changed the destination blind on both the front and the rear of the train. So let's just take a look at another camera angle of this train, and then we'll depart out on our journey. Now that it's time to depart, I'm pressing R to close the doors as this is a driver only operated service. I'm now going to turn off the driver reminder appliance and put the train into forward. And now at this point, we're now ready to depart out towards Stratford, which is our first stop. The speed limit here is currently 15 miles per hour, and we've got around four miles to go to Stratford. So I'm just in notch two of power to bring our speed up towards 15 miles per hour. And then once we've reached 15, I'm going to shut the power off now just to allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. Once we're out of this underground area, then the speed limit is going up to 30 miles per hour. We're just reaching the 30 mile per hour speed post now, and I can't accelerate to that until we reach the next overbridge, which you can now see coming up just ahead. So at this point, we're currently on the down electric line. The uh, slow lines on the Great Eastern Main Line are called the electric lines. And so we run as four track all of the way to Shenfield, where the Great Eastern Main Line then reduces down to two tracks. Next to us on the left hand side are the main lines. And then there are two more tracks just a little bit further on, which are the suburban lines, which turn off at the first station that we pass, uh, which is Bethnal Green Station, which is about one mile away from here. So we're now accelerating up towards 30 miles per hour, and then in a moment, as we reach 30, I'm going to shut off the power once again, just to allow the train to coast. And then once we're rounding this next left-hand curve, we're then going to start climbing on a 1 in 70 upward gradient, which will cause us to lose a little bit of speed, and so I'm going to have to add some power to try and make sure that we don't lose too much speed. Unfortunately, with this route, with how demanding it is uh, on the computer, even with a computer of these specifications, I can't actually get a solid smooth 30 frames a second for most of this journey. Just to point out, the speed limit's just gone up to 40 miles per hour, and we can accelerate towards that at this signal gantry just coming up. You can see these signals there, which are for the opposite direction. So we can now accelerate up towards 40 miles per hour. So as I was saying, I can't unfortunately get a solid smooth 30 frames a second for most of this journey up until we reach the Shenfield area. In fact, as we're departing Liverpool Street here, the average frame rate is unfortunately around 16 frames per second. The station that we're now passing on the left hand side is Bethnal Green. The speed limit is now going up to 50 miles per hour and I can accelerate as we cross the next point which is coming up just ahead. The speed limit is about to go up further to 60 miles per hour but there's no actual speed post marking it. What I can say is that you can accelerate to 60 once you're passing this signal just here. So 
So the Suburban Line uh, left us at Bethnal Green and they're heading towards Hackney Downs and onwards towards Stansted Airport and Cambridge as well as uh, more local destinations such as Enfield. Now that we're doing 60 miles per hour, I'm just going to shut off the power for a moment. The speed limit here is now going up to 70, and I can accelerate up towards 70 miles per hour as the buffer stops, you can see at the sidings on the right there, just disappear. So I'll go back into full power to bring our speed up towards 70 miles per hour. Unfortunately, due to the poor frame rate on this route, I haven't been able to include that many external shots like I did in my previous video, uh, but it seems that it's quite popular that I included the external shots, particularly of the trains departing away from the station. So I'm gonna try and include that in more videos in the future, uh, certainly on routes where I get reasonable performance, um, of which this route certainly isn't one of those. In fact, if you don't turn down the scenery quality uh, in the graphics settings on this particular route, then the chances are the train simulator will actually have a crash dump Unfortunately, this is due to it being old 32-bit software. And with the old 32-bit software, we have a four gigabyte RAM limit. And when the game needs to use more than four gigabytes, it simply crashes out. So just joining us on the right-hand side here is the Docklands Light Railway. And just to the left of us um, is the London Olympic Park at Stratford, which was home to the 2012 London Olympics. At the Docklands Light Railway station, we just passed there on the right-hand side. We had a third of a mile to go to um, an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction and so I've now got the brakes on for the upcoming 50. So we're now down to 50 miles per hour and I'm just going to leave the brakes in step one for now uh, to continue slowing down for Stratford Station which is coming up in a moment. Now, as we get closer to the platform, I'm going to increase the braking, just to ensure that I'm not coming in too quick. Generally, you want to aim to come into the platforms at around 30-ish miles per hour on this route, if you want to be sure that you won't overshoot without having to use uh, extra hard braking. I couldn't see a clear stop marker on the platform here at Stratford, but uh, having been here many a time and taken this route, I do know that I will need to stop very close to the end. Slow down slightly too early, so just release the brakes momentarily. And now if I start applying up to step two, we should now be stopping in just about the right place here. And so welcome to Stratford. Starting away from Stratford, the starting speed limit is 50 miles per hour with around half a mile to go to our next stop at Maryland. And the next two signals, as the pop-up um, box there just said, are currently stuck at red. So I have to treat them, well, ultimately they shouldn't actually be red, but unfortunately in Train Simulator, the train dispatcher sometimes um, gets these signals stuck at red when they shouldn't be. Normally in real life, if you had a faulty signal, then you would have to stop and request permission to proceed. Due to the pop-up box there, I'm just going to press tab to request permission to proceed whilst we're on the move. I'm not going to go above 30 miles per hour here as we will shortly be approaching Maryland platform. Uh, this is actually one of the most pointless train journeys. Certainly, um, you wouldn't want to take the train between Stratford and Maryland in reality due to how close they are. You can literally walk the journey in about five minutes. So by the time you've got onto the platforms and um, got onto the train and then got off the platform at the other end, it would have been just as quick to walk. So we're now coming into Maryland Station. Here at Maryland, I may mean to stop at the S sign, which is at the end of the platform. So I'm going to stop here just with the signal in view, just so I can just see the aspect there. I can just see the glow of it, in fact.
Departing Maryland, the speed limit is now 60 miles per hour, with just over three quarters of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Forest Gate. Just had a bit of wheel slip there, so just cut the power back slightly. Now back up to full power once again. The speed limit here is now going up to 70 miles per hour, though for some reason um, the speed post there um, lists the speed limit as 90. So just to confirm, it is not 90 miles per hour, but 70. Now we've reached 50 miles per hour, I'm going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast. I can now see the platform at Forest Gate just coming up, so I'm just applying the brakes into step 2 just before we reach the signal just there. That should bring our speed down quite nicely. Here at Forest Gate Station, I'm aiming to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. And so this should hopefully be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Forest Gate, the speed limit is still currently 70 miles per hour, with around one mile to go to the next stop at Manor Park. I'm going to idle the power in a moment at just above 50 miles per hour, and then we're going to have a Morpeth board warning for an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction, which comes into force after our next stop. And so once we reach that uh, AWS for the Morpeth board warning, I'm then going to apply the brakes for Manor Park Station. So I've now made a step two brake application. bringing our speed down quite nicely. Once again at Manor Park, I need to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. on that. I said the S sign, but it's actually an eight car stop sign, which I'm stopping at just here. It's basically the equivalent as this is the final stopping point. Departing away from Manor Park, the speed limit is currently 70 miles per hour, though very quickly dropping down to 40 miles per hour. And at this point we've got just over one mile to go to our next stop, which is Ilford. Seems the sun's decided to come out again, so I've been able to turn off the wipers for now. I do like um, with this unit that if you are driving in the rain that you do get more wheel slip problems. I think it just makes things a bit more interesting when the speedo goes a little bit haywire. I did notice in the practice runs for this journey that um, there's not going to be that much uh, wheel slip as I drive along. 
So I've coasted at 40 miles per hour, the speed limit has dropped to 40, and now we're starting on a 1 in 80 upward gradient. Um, as the electric lines now cross over the main lines, and we're going to swap sides, so the main lines are going to be on our right hand side for the rest of the journey to Shenfield. I'm just going between notch 1 and notch 2 of power to try and ensure that we don't lose too much speed. And then as we just top the climb just here, I'm now going to shut off the power as we're about to start on a 1 in 80 descent into Ilford Station. The speed limit here is now going up to 70 miles per hour. And you can now see the platform Ilford coming up just ahead, so I'm just using some light braking here to ensure that we are going slow enough as we enter the platform because the downward gradient will of course affect our ability to uh, brake effectively. Here at Ilford Station I didn't actually see a clear stop marker, um, but I think it's pretty obvious that the train would stop at the end of the platform. And I'm actually using step 3 braking for a moment um, because the rear of the train is still on the downward gradient as I was coming into the platform, so I just wanted to ensure that we would slow down quick enough, and so this should be just about the right place to stop. Departing away from Ilford, the speed limit is currently 70 miles per hour with around one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Seven Kings. As we reach around 55 miles per hour, then at that point I'm going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast until we need to brake for Seven Kings Station. We're now passing Ilford EMU Depot on the left hand side doing 55 miles per hour so I've just shut off the PAL. I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop as I can see some buffer stops coming up on the left hand side. In fact I can just see them in the distance. I don't need to slow down quite yet but I will do in a moment. I can also now see the platforms at Seven Kings coming up. So now we're approaching the red buffer stops just there on the left. I've got the brakes into step two which should bring our speed down quite nicely here. might be slowing down slightly too quickly so I'm just going down to step one of braking uh, so that I can aim to enter the platform at around 30 miles per hour. Here at Seven Kings I need to stop at the S at the end of the platform. And so this should be just about the right place to stop. Departing away from Seven Kings, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour, with around three quarters of a mile to go to our next stop, which is Good Maze. I'm 
now going to shut off the power there at just above 45 miles per hour and going to apply the brakes for our stop just after we've passed this signal here. Here at Goodmays, I need to aim to stop at the eight car stop sign, which is at the end of the platform. Although it actually does look a bit too far up if you look at where the four car stop sign has been placed. So we're just passing the four car stop sign now. And so you'd think that uh, with a, an eight coach train, which I'm currently driving, uh, that the stopping point would probably be two thirds of the way along the platform and not all of the way at the end. So I'm not sure if they've mispositioned the uh, stop markers on the station here or not. So this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Good Maze, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour, with just over two thirds of a mile to go to our next stop which is Chad Wellheath. Now we've reached 45 miles per hour, I'm shutting off the power here. I'm going to apply the brakes in a moment, just as we get a little bit closer to the platform here. So now I'm braking for our stop here and at Chadwell Heath. I am aiming to stop at the S sign at the end of the platform. So the S sign now just slightly obscured by the um, CCTV monitors and this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Chadwell Heath, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour, with around two and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Romford. Once we reach uh, 70 miles per hour, I'm then going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. And I know that with the acceleration rate of this train, that once we reach 70 miles per hour, we've then got one mile to go to our stop. Now 
now shut off the power. We've got around one mile to go. We're now entering a left-hand curve here, quite a sweeping left-hand curve. And so I'm going to continue around this curve for a moment. I'm just getting ready to apply the brakes. At the next signal, I think it is just coming up, is roughly the correct braking position. In fact, I'm going to brake on the AWS ramp for that signal there. So I've now got the brakes in step two to bring our speed down. So just remember the AWS ramp of the second signal on the left-hand curve. Here at Romford Station, uh, once again there was no clear stop marker, so I'm aiming to stop just at the end of the platform here. Slowing down just slightly too quick, so I released the brakes momentarily. Now I'm back up to step two to bring our speed down. And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. Departing away from Romford, the speed limit is still 70 miles per hour with just under one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Gidea Park. So the AWS warning that we just had there is for this Morpeth board warning us of an upcoming 50 mile per hour speed restriction, which is three quarters of a mile away and comes into force just before Gidea Park Station. I'm going to accelerate up to 55 miles per hour and then once we're doing 55, I'm going to shut off the power shutting off the power here and I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop as we come towards the next AWS ramp and the 50 mile per hour speed post comes into view. Might be coming in slightly on the fast side here, I'm just keeping an eye on that and we'll go up to step three of braking if required. We've now got a further warning for an upcoming 40 mile per hour speed restriction which comes into force shortly after our stop here at Gidea Park. Here at Gidea Park I need to stop at, I believe it's the eight sign at the end of the platform. Probably shouldn't be fanning the brakes quite as much as that, but we should now be stopped in just about the right place. Departing away from Gidea Park, the speed limit is currently 50 miles per hour, though it will be very quickly dropping to 40 miles per hour. And we've got around one and a half miles to go to our next stop, which is Harold Wood. So just had a bit of wheel slip there, pulling away from the stop, so I just had to cut the power back for a moment. Seems that we've now managed to get our grip back here. So as we um, accelerate up to 40 miles per hour, I'm then going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast until we're able to accelerate further. We're currently passing Gidea Park carriage sidings.
just giving us a low amount of power here, so we're just losing a little bit of speed. The speed limit's now going up to 60 miles per hour, and I can accelerate at this next overhead gantry, the one immediately after the overbridge that we just passed. And at this point, we've got around two-thirds of a mile to go to Harold Wood. So I'm going to accelerate up towards 50 miles per hour, and then I'm going to shut off the power, applying the brakes for our stop around the area of the next signal. I've just noticed that it stopped raining. Uh, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to turn off the wipers with the keyboard. Every time I try and use the keys, it doesn't seem to want to turn off, so just use the mouse there to turn the wiper control to the off position. And so here's Harold Wood Station, and I'm aiming to stop once again at the end of the platform at the eight-car stop sign. This is another one of those platforms where we've just passed the four-car stop marker, and it seems an awful long way up to the eight-car stop marker, so I'm thinking again it might have been mispositioned. Or should I say misplaced, because I'm not sure if mispositioned is a word or not. And so we're coming down in speed nicely. And this should be roughly the correct place to stop. Departing away from Harold Wood, the speed limit is immediately going up here to 70 miles per hour, and we've got around three and a quarter miles to go to our next stop, which is Brentwood. Harold Wood is the final station, I believe, within the London Travel Card Zone area, so we're now leaving London Travel Card Zone 6, and I'm not sure exactly where the London boundary is, but I know it's somewhere pretty close to here. And um, we're in the county of Essex at this point, although we've actually been in Essex for a good few miles now. We're now starting uh, on a, an upward gradient of 1 in 125, which will steepen to 1 in 98 and will affect our ability to accelerate. And also at this point, I've finally got a smooth and stable 30 frames per second on the recording. In a moment we're going to be coming up on a right-hand curve and as we enter this right-hand curve we've then got around one mile to go to our stop. We've now got a warning for an upcoming 60 mile per hour speed limit is around three quarters of a mile from our stop so I've just idled the power at this point to allow the train to coast. I'm going to apply the brakes for Brentwood station as we approach this next signal.
Here at Brentswood, I need to stop at the eight car stop sign, which is around two thirds of the way along the platform. So this particular eight car stop sign seems to be situated in the correct position. Slow down a little bit too early there. So this should be about the right place to stop. Departing away from Brentwood, the speed limit is 70 miles per hour, though quickly dropping to 60 miles per hour. And we've got just under two miles to go um, to our next and final stop at Shenfield. And I should have remembered, though I forgot, that we're actually starting on an upward gradient of one in 118. So we uh, probably rolled back very slightly there um, when I wasn't quite intending to do so. I noticed there a train simulator bug on the class 360 that just overtook us, which is traveling along with the doors wide open. Uh, not quite sure what causes that, but uh, unfortunately it does happen sometimes. I know from when I've been creating scenarios that um, I've had it so that the train's got its doors stuck open. I've deleted it, I've put it back in as a new service, and the doors are still stuck open when it passes me. So I really don't think there's any uh, quick or easy fix for that one. Uh, so we're now climbing on a gradient of around 1 in 80, which is impeding our ability to accelerate. Seems that the uh, smooth and steady 30 frames per second didn't last long, as we're now stuck at around 25 to 26 frames per second at this point. The gradient is now shallowing a bit, and as we reach 60 miles per hour, I'm going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast. shortly be coming up on Shenfield. The speed limit will also shortly be dropping to 50 miles per hour. I believe I can see the platform at Shenfield just coming up, so I'm now applying the brakes for our stop. Coming in just a little bit on the first side, so I've just had to increase the braking up to step three for a moment, and now I've just pulled that back down to step two again. Here at Shenfield, I'm aiming to stop at the S at the end of the platform. So here we are, arrival at Shenfield. Thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, please don't forget that for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with a link to my Facebook page in the description of this video. And if you would like to sponsor this channel on Patreon, then please follow my Patreon link in the video description for more information. Once again, thank you for watching.